was wondering if we had to yell and scream as opposed to use microphones. Hi, everybody. How are we doing? Fantastic. Are we ready to learn about some networking and how to meet people and how to talk to people? First of all, the first thing we should do is turn to the person on your left and say hello. hello. <laughs> how come half of you didn't know what your left was? That was hilarious. It's like, let's turn to our right. <laughs> your left, not my left. All right, turn to the person on your right and say hello. 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 Oh, yeah, I didn't do that. <laughs> I told you to do it. I didn't even do it. <laughs> All right, so now that we got that out of the way, um, so you might notice we're actually missing one person, so th that person will join us in uh, progress, Pulkit Dada. And when Pulkit does join us, he's literally gonna, he's firing and coming in hot. Give him a huge round of applause. Like, even if we're in the middle of a sentence and he sits down, just interrupt everything. Like, we're all very happy for him. All right, my name is Art Ocal. I am going to be the traffic cop moderating this. By the way, there will be questions at the end of this as well, so feel free to fill out the cards. I believe Melissa has some cards that are going to be circulating around. Yes, you have some there, if you mind holding them up in the air. Uh, they have beautiful SAG-AFTRA uh, backing there, so feel free to fill that out, and we will get to as many questions as possible. And Liz will also be spearheading uh, an interactive workshop afterwards so that we can apply what we learned here tonight. So let's, without get further ado. Get yeah. excited for that. Exactly. <laughs> get excited. But not as much as when Pulkit arrives. We save your energy for that, please. All right. So let's learn about our, our panelists first. Uh, she is a casting director. She joined the team at Telsey and Company in 2017. She served on the board of the New York Women in Film and Television. Her background in theater has given her many valuable skills, including a sense of humor and the ability to make magic happen on a minimal budget. And isn't that the most important quality <laughs> in all of acting? Yes, it is. Uh, please welcome Destiny Lilly. Good evening. She is a writer, director, leadership, and high-performance coach, and the founder for, of the Collective for Women Creators. Please welcome Liz Kimball. Hey, everyone. And just to get out of the way, Pulkit's uh, bio is he's a producer, director, and writer raised in six countries across four continents and now based in New York City. He has worked on a wide variety of feature films, documentaries, commercial short films, music videos, and multimedia campaigns which, uh, team, with teams around the world. And he's also late for this panel, so round of applause for him. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, let's talk networking, ladies. Uh, the, the first thing I want to do, I also want to give some practical tips. So Liz and I actually did something that I do a lot before we even got here. So we were all on an email chain, and we all knew who each other were. And of course, you're going to Google. You're going to kind of creep on people just to see what they're like, check out their social media. Uh, so Liz and I did what I like to call the Instagram tagging. So what we did was we looked through, we not only found each other on Instagram, but we went one step further. We followed each other, but we also found some posts to like and to comment on. Now, Liz, why would that be an important thing to do when you're meeting somebody or even before you've met them? So there's a, a guy named Jim Collins who, has, who wrote a book called Good, Good to Great. I actually study, a lot of the stuff that I study is I, I look at texts and things that are outside of the entertainment industry and kind of pull ideas back. And he has this idea called prepared curiosity, which I really like because I, I'm a naturally curious person and I'm also a naturally shy and nervous person. So doing a little bit of homework and getting to know people and just like start to s figure out where our, our constellations connect before an event really helps me be in my body and feel more connected to people when I meet them. And I, really, I just really like that. It's like, okay, be curious, but also I can do some homework first. Yeah. So, so by doing that also, to me, uh, you also create like just a sense of warmth, right? Yeah. So like we immediately have an, an increased level of friendship upon meeting each other, yeah. especially yeah. when you are on a list with a, a bunch of people to do that just adds that familiarity to it. So uh, Destiny, what are some social media tips even before meeting people that you would, you would apply? Hmm. Um, I think it's really important to be easily found. You know, sometimes, a lot of the time um, when I'm looking for actors and sometimes we're looking for something very specific or sometimes somebody's like, oh yeah, I saw this guy in this like show and it was like downtown, it was just this like little thing. And you have this tiny, you know, paper playbill from it and you Google that person's name and you can't find them. So then it's like, well, okay, <laughs> you know. <laughs> a lot of people are harder to, f to be found, like, it, like, it can be, I know it can be hard, you know, this is something I struggle with as a casting director, like drawing a line between your personal life and your professional life, but you want to be someone that like, I can type your name into Google and find you, 
and find information on how to contact you or find a little bit about you or, you know, at the very least, like, you know, like, like a really simple website with your picture, your name and your contact information or your agency, all those things, like really simple things just to show that you have a presence because if I don't see that presence, I'm like, oh, maybe this person isn't as serious about this as I thought, or maybe this person, you know, isn't ready to come in for, you know, uh, an audition at this point because they don't really have their stuff together. Uh, so I think it's really great to be easily found and to have like, yeah. Unbelievable pool kit. You by far got the biggest applause of the night. I don't know how that happened. Wow. Wow. That entrance was superb. Welcome. Thank Thanks you. for joining us. Was that all planned? No, no of course not. Uh, let's get your thoughts before we move on. So we were talking about uh, some social media tips just to, to warm up the audience on, on even before meeting people or afterwards, what are some of your social media networking tips, that some best practices that you would use, Twitter, Instagram, whatever it is? Oh, wow. Um, best practices. Um, I, I, well, I think I mostly use Twitter these days and, well, a little bit of Instagram for uh, building networks or professional networks. So on Twitter, I tend to follow a lot of people that I look up to or that I admire that I might want to work with and things like that. Um, Instagram, I'm a bit more, uh, I guess, personal about who, what I do and who I am. So I guess on Twitter, I'm, I make it a bit more official um, and engage in more sort of official professional conversations with people. And then Twitter, I'm kind of just like, I, I went here for breakfast. That was cool. Um, <laughs> And then I'm, I'm trying to do more of also posting about my own work on Instagram. So I, you know, I, I had a shoot last weekend, or actually two days ago, um, and I was posting from that on Instagram. So you know, just keeping more of the personal audience and audience building going on the Instagram side. Um, Facebook, I'm kind of moving away from a little bit, um, but yeah, uh, that would be the how I would divide the two. Can I jump in with a quick thing? So, uh, a question I get a lot from clients when we talk about how to like really cultivate, I mean, I really think of, of networking and relationship building from a service and generosity perspective. But the question is, you're like, well, how do I do that? I don't want to send ro a dozen roses to every person that I meet. <laughs> um, and I think that social media is actually providing a lot of opportunities for that. And something I really, and, I, and just figuring out like how to use your creativity to think about ways on social media that you can spread generosity. So if there's somebody that you're wanting to build a relationship with, a lot of times we're sort of waiting for the chance to directly ask them something, but I think social media gives these great opportunities to give them shout outs, share their work without um, like even you know having a relationship with them first. If it's something that's really specific, you may want to ask first if you can share, but then that's also a great gateway. But I love that, I, I love seeing these ways people are like just featuring people, it, I think it can become like a really nice sense of community. And then the second thing is, if you're wanting to build a relationship with somebody, absolutely be on their mailing list and be following them. I know that now when I get requests for people to talk to me and, and build relationships with me, I'll check to see if, if they're in my world because it feels to me at this point irresponsible to start asking for things before you've really taken in that person's work and, and shown your generosity in that way. Just a quick note on that. I, I mean, what I've been doing a lot recently is appreciating other people's work, um, especially on Twitter. So if yes. I watched a movie recently that I really liked, I'll go on Twitter and say, I really like this movie, you know, congrats to so-and-so. Um, and people read that. They, they, see, yes. they see that and notice it. And then that is a great way to, again, start a conversation if you want to down the line. So we're going to get to uh, in-person networking tips, but I just want to expand on that because one thing uh, that I have read a lot is when people are scr scrolling through Instagram, they will not only look at the main post, but they'll also look at the first couple of comments as well. So if you comment on people whose work you admire, for example, if you like and comment, that comment can get a bunch of likes such that it will be the first comment that people see. So 
it will increase your visibility. If you happen, I'm just using The Rock as an example. Let's say The Rock posted his 78 pancake breakfast that he always has, right? So then all of a sudden you write something witty or something funny because you appreciate that and people like that, that will be the first comment that people see and will increase your visibility because other people are seeing it. And if your brand's aligned, then maybe that's a way that more people will be finding you uh, just by simply putting a comment. But also, liking uh, and appreciating work, I spend maybe 10, 15 minutes a day just combing Instagram and Twitter looking for gratitude to give because it's a mutually beneficial exercise. I'm giving people a dopamine drip in their head, right, of happiness because somebody appreciated their work. It's genuine, but that's what happens, right? When people appreciate your work, you feel good, but then you feel good for helping, for giving someone else joy as well, right? So there's that sort of like cycle, that the circle of life, I guess. It's a good way to put it. Uh, just for our reference, how many of us in here are actors? Raise your hand. Okay, so it's pretty much it's pretty much networking for actors. So you're going to be talking a lot as a casting director. Uh, <laughs> um, so okay, so let's talk about networking in the frame of actors because uh, the people that actors need to meet will certainly differ from people in the corporate world or, or, or even people who are in the C-suite, etc. So how, what would you say in terms of meeting actors or actors trying to approach you are some best ways that people can at least start a conversation uh, with casting directors? Yeah, um, I think there are a lot of ways and I think that uh, it's important to have conversations with casting directors but it's also to one of the most important things for me is I think that everyone should approach each other as equals. Because sometimes people will, will like actors will come to me and be like, I need a role and you can <laughs> give it to me. And that feels may like- not be a, the best starter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they may not use those exact words, but that's how it often comes across. It's like, how can you help me? And it's like, well, as a casting director, I also have a problem, which is I need actors for these roles. So we can help each other. And I think approaching people as equals in everything you do, because you have something of value to give as well. It's not just that the casting director or the director has something of value. You also have something of value, your talent, your skills, your time. So I think the first thing is just to approach people as equals. You know, It's not just that you need something from them. It's not just a transactional thing. It's very much that we are equals. We are all artists creating within this industry and we all have something of value to offer each other. Um, I do think, I personally do not love when someone I don't know, like friends me on Facebook, for example, because I don't know that person, um, but on like, if they want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter or whatever, that's fine with me, that's great. I'm happy to engage with people more in that way. So I personally keep my Facebook a little more personal just because that's the way it is and I don't use it a ton. But, um, but there's lots of ways to engage with people on social media. So I would say like many, ca like the casting office I work for, Telsey and Company, they have a Twitter, they have, a Facebook page, like follow those, you know, but there's all sorts of information on there. You can then engage with those posts as well. You can start to be kind of in the know about what's going on because another thing that sometimes happens is people will call or email or send a postcard or something that says like, hey, what are you casting right now? <laughs> you know, and it's like, oh, well, I'm quite busy and I don't necessarily have the time to <laughs> tell you what I'm casting right now. But if someone is like, hey, I heard you're casting this show. I would be really interested in being considered for this role because I have this skill or this background or something specific. That's much more likely to be like, oh, great. This person is not only coming towards me in a kind way, but also coming with something to offer. You know, because it's not just like, oh, I need this role or I need a role. It's like, I have the skills and background that suit this role and can help solve your problem. It's like, hey, we could solve problems together, which is awesome, because that's all we're really doing is solving each other's problems together. Um, so yeah, and I think it's always important to just be really nice, like being friendly and listening when you're engaging with someone, like really taking the time to listen to what they have to say and then you know, accept that and, and respond in kind. I think that's really helpful. So Liz, I'm sure that we have a room full of nice people that know how to send a nice email or, or approach people very kindly, but I'm sure many of us in this room also want an advantage. 
We also want to stick out. We also want to know how to really break through uh, when we have these kind of meetings. So for you, somebody who's really uh, been deep in the weeds in terms of networking and understanding how human interactions work, uh, what advice can you impart in terms of uh, people who are trying to in improve their careers or find the right people and, and maintain those relationships? Such a good question. Okay, processing. Um, the first thing that comes to mind is around specificity. And I think that something that I notice, uh, um, so first, like just specificity of knowing what it is that you're wanting and then organizing your networking practice. And by the way, I think of this as a practice. I think everyone is cultivating their own networking, relationship building practice. So I get questions all the time like, how many days should I wait until I send this email? And how, ex you know, exactly how should I be following up and writing these emails? By the way, I do wholeheartedly believe in a follow up. However, um, there's no, I don't think there's one set of rules. And I think that if you're constantly looking for somebody else to give you the rules, you're not taking leadership of your practice. So I would encourage all of us to continue to deepen our personal practice of this is like this amazing thing we get to do, which is build relationships so we can all make more art together. Um, but one of the things that is, I really encourage people to think about in their practice is what is it that you're specifically wanting and then how do you empower everybody around you? How do you invite them to help you do that and you be able to help them at the same time? So inviting each other up. Um, and something that I see a lot is, is actually like reaching out to people without those kinds of really specific asks that make it so easy for someone to say yes. So that's the difference between someone being like, hey Liz, um, just wanted to like pick your brain a little bit about, you know, the blogging, coaching, directing life. Maybe we could get together at some point. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I, um, yeah, like, so that's not going to get me to respond to that email. Um, but if someone says, hey, I know you're super busy. I love, you know, say something, acknowledgement of the work. And then say, do you, buy, do you have 15 minutes? Would you be willing to jump on the phone with me for 15 minutes and give me your best thoughts on X? So that there's like a container that's given to me, there's a specific question, and I know they've done some work on this beforehand, so they're not expecting me to do all of the work to jump into it. By the way, picking the brain, not my favorite phrase, um, because it feels really aggressive and also not reciprocal. Um, I like to know that you're not <laughs> gonna get inside my brain. Um, I'd like to have a dance with you. I'd like to have an experience with you. Um, and, and that's a two-way street for me. So um, specificity is one thing. I could go on, but I'm sure. Well, what I, I think to expand yeah. that, I think a lot of people, especially like the actor casting director relationship, maybe some people in this audience will feel that it's a very one-way sort of networking where the actor is asking something of, and you, have I'm sure you've had experiences like this as well, um, Pulkit, where you're uh, being approached by actors who want work, and they're like, "Please give me a job," or or they find some creative way to say that or find that. Uh, and so I guess like how if I'm an actor and I want to find a way to feel more confident when I am approaching these kind of uh, asks, what kind of advice would you give on that? Um. Whew. Okay, so I think uh, for me as uh, as a producer and director, what's been really important when working with actors is uh, our personalities driving, actually, which sounds really specific, and you know, not everyone can get along like best friends. But I think for me, it's been very important. You know, a filmmaker working with actor is such a personal, intimate thing. Um, and you get to, you know, have to spend so much time with each other and you have to build, a, bring a story to life together. Um, that I've definitely also had experiences where sometimes, you know, maybe I've worked with an actor that I haven't spent time to get to know or had a conversation with beforehand in detail. And sometimes that doesn't go too well on set. Um, and I, I'm at fault with that too. I mean, there, you know, there can be personality clashes. But um, now what I'm very, uh, careful about and mindful of is when I'm meeting actors or other collaborators, potential collaborators, it's just having a good conversation with them as people, as human beings, because we're all creative people. We all like to tell stories. Um, you know, sometimes actors come with their own uh, really interesting, amazing point of views of how even I could tell the story I want to tell, which is really exciting for a filmmaker. 
Um, so I think doing like let's say a little bit of research into um, like say if I am being approached, then it would be nice that you know if the actors or someone else has done a little bit of research into what I have done. Um, like for example, I don't make you know horror films, but if you really want to be in a horror film, I'm not the person to come to. <laughs> um, I can recommend you to other people, but I won't do that. So I think just having that a little bit of prior knowledge. Um, I do the same. If if I'm about to meet an actor, I'll do research on them. Um, even if you know someone sort of uh, you know emails me out of the blue and they find me some somewhere somehow somewhere, uh, and I'm taking the time to talk to them on the phone or meet with them, I will do my research on them as well. Um, so just having, you know, sometimes what helps for an actor is also just like, you know, have a little bit of your work out there or in your email or something that I can easily click on and just like watch mm -hmm. real quick because that gives me context of who you are. Yeah, and to follow up on that, there are other ways other than, you know, being cast in a project that we can get to know each other. You know, we're always looking for people to be audition readers and we always have, um, you know, there's always, especially with theater, but also with film, there's always, you know, we need people to read scripts at different, you know, theater companies and different production companies. There are people who, you know, we, oh, we want to put together a table read of this script. And sometimes we just need someone to read stage directions, you know, but that's a really great way to engage with people. You get to know each other, you chat, maybe you all go for drinks afterward. And now you're creating like these, these very real, relationships and also it's a way for if we don't know you that well to kind of test out if we think you know we should continue getting to know you so there's all these different and, and that's a way that you can also offer something of yourself of your time and your talent that isn't necessarily like about you getting something right away it's more about the experience because so much of this when it boils down to it is do we want to spend time on a set or on a stage with this person? You know, do I feel comfortable, you know, telling this director like, yes, this is someone you should spend the next six weeks with or six months with. So a lot of it comes down to that. And so having those experiences where you get to like chat to someone a little bit and you get to see them and like, oh yeah, you know, she seems really cool or he seems, you know, very relaxed. That kind of thing can lead to more opportunities. Uh, oh, sorry. Go no, you go. I have a sure? I have a woo woo tip, but you go, and then oh, I'll okay. share the woo woo tip. Um, Feel free to sprinkle those throughout the entire talk. By the way, the <laughs> I, more I tips, so the better. Many. Yeah, for Don't sure. Don't give me that invitation. <laughs> no, no, I'm intrigued. Um, again, building up uh, off of that, uh, for me, you know, when I meet actors. Um, what's really useful for me to know is, you know, you telling me like, hey, you know, I've done a lot of TV or theater, but I want to do more you know, drama or more comedy or, you know, just if kind of what also what you, if you're interested in breaking your own uh, boundaries and comfort zones as an actor, for me, that's really exciting because if you've only done comedy and I want to put you in like, you know, a murder mystery, um, for me, that's exciting. Like, what can I do? What can I do with this actor to like make them, you know, put in, put them in this new world? Um, so just being a little aware of that also is what you haven't done and what you would like to do and what you're open to doing. Um, and also, I think for me, it's also it's 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 also a long game. Like you know, I it, I'll meet someone say today, I may not have a project right now, but you know, I'll, I'll catalog people so I'll know like, hey, I met this person who might be good. They have a good look for this or whatever. And then maybe in like six months, I have something, and then I'll remember that person. And be like, hey, let's let's talk because I I thought of you for this. So how often would you recommend people keep in touch? I think that's a big thing. So I know I'm skipping here because I kind of wanted to go in order, but since you mentioned it, yeah. uh, that's huge, right? Timing is everything. Sometimes you won't know what when the right time is, and some people go by a hard and fast rule. Every month and a half, I'm going to email these people, and it's going to be you know to to keep on the radar or keep the name fresh or whatever it is. Uh, but what have you guys seen or suggest that works the best in order to uh, stay on top of mind for people you really want to work with? I don't think there's a fixed frequency that I've been using. Maybe that's a bad thing. I don't know. Um, I look at you because I'm like, <laughs> do you, am I saying this wrong? Um, I, you know, I. It's been a few months. Like, you know, every few months, or you know, when I follow up with people that I want to work with, it'll be you know three or four months. Um, for me, it's obviously like around the time when I know there's a lot stirring for me that I might need collaborators on. Um, but I don't, I don't know, I mean, I don't know if I've used a f sort of a regular frequency, maybe I should. 
don't know. Should I list? <laughs> no, I think so. so um, I like to think of being consistent ish because um, I think that the I do encourage something that I think happens a lot is we think of networking as this like kind of annoying icky thing that a, a lot of people tell me like it's just the thing they hate doing they really don't want to do and how I'd many like people in here hate networking okay great so we got about okay, a that's a lot yeah, about a third right yeah and then how many people feel ambivalent or or sort of like neutral okay don't know how to do it. Okay, right. Don't know how to, and then who is just like I love it. I'm here because you're. This is yes. our convo. Okay, yes. awesome. That's you so specifically, cool. yes. Um, Young, yeah, youngest person awesome. in the room loves networking. Just <laughs> want to point that out. It's fair. That's right. You got to talk to people. Said, what's your? How name? sad do you all feel that he figured it out at like? How old are you? He figured it out at 14, <laughs> folks. All right. He figured it out okay. at 14 yeah. years old. Josh, we should have had a chair yeah. for you here. Um, okay, oh, so what I wanted to say. Um, I, for 20 years, couldn't even look people in the eye. I was extremely shy, extremely introverted, and now I teach networking, and also it's a part of my life, and I, I take actually joy from it, even though I, I identify extremely as an introvert. Um, so hands up anyone else here who identifies as an introvert. And now we have a new term, ambiverted, which is sort of both. I get my energy from both. And then there's extroverted. Um, but I really believe it's a set of skills that we can learn. So, but some of the, something I see happening a lot is that we don't make time for it. And so we think it's this, this like thing I have to do, but I'm actually not building it into my week and I'm not putting time on the calendar. So I think your calendar should reflect your goals and, and where in your dreams and where you want to be. So if I'm looking at your calendar, I should be able to see if you are really wanting to build next level relationships in your business and your career, we want to see that there's time in the calendar for you to be researching people, for you to be reaching out, for you to be thinking about it. So I encourage at least a power hour every week. But I say consistent-ish because there will be weeks when you're deep in a creative project or deep in set and you just it's just not the week to do it. And so that's why I don't follow these really specific rules. But um, I, I really think of every relationship like a plant and the plant needs water on the days you don't need something from the plant. So that's when we want to be, I really encourage if you've got big asks you want to be making from for people that you're watering the plant on social media and and um, in other ways thinking things that you can do for that person. Really thinking, you're using your curiosity and your creativity. What's it like to be them? What could I do to make their life better, to um, d offer my service in some way before I'm going to ask for something. And knowing that the ask is not the end of the relationship. It's not a shoot to kill kind of thing. It's not a target. It's we're, we're building something together so that then I'm asking you for saying and then at some point you're gonna ask for me, ask something from me. Um, and something, another thing I would say, this is the woo-woo tip around confidence because you asked about confidence. I don't think we can wait for confidence. I think waiting for confidence is like waiting for Godot. Um, and so, thank you for laughing at my joke. For the three people that got that. No, it's That's really good. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I, it's the number one question I get asked, how, do I, how can I be confident? And I think confidence is super elusive. I think that you can spend your whole life waiting for confidence. Um, but when, you have to, when you, someone talks about confidence, they say, oh, I felt in my body, I was doing something I really cared about, I felt aligned with the thing. <laughs> Those are things we can work on today. Like you can get in your body right now, we can get aligned with what you want to do, and we can know what you want. So don't, this, this sort of elusive confidence, just do the brave thing. So I like really encourage courage over confidence. But anyway, a way to, to work on your confidence, make a list of 20 things, 20 amazing things about you that you bring to every relationship. I encourage people to go into meetings, literally with this in your back pocket. Um, or meetings or big big networking opportunities. Sometimes when we get in these moments, like all of the awesome stuff about us, we j it like drops from our brain. And we start to lose our, our identity and then we become very boring, which is not attractive. <laughs> and so, um, and also it's our job to empower other people to see that magnificence and that awesomeness about it. Usually we're waiting for the relationship to make that up, sort of make us feel legitimate. But um, I encourage, like, y it's your job. You advocate for your magnificence, so then you can help destiny see it. I have a surefire, <laughs> I have a surefire confidence tip for all of you, except for you. Shot of vodka. <laughs>
Thank you, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I say, except for you. That's really interesting. Sure. You know, I don't want people to know what kind of what type of fart I am, so I think I'll leave that. <laughs> He, he suggested write a BuzzFeed article about yourself and then send it to everyone. Um, I, so let me be really clear about my exercise. That's a 20 list of things for you. I'm not saying post that to the world. I'm saying that's so you can know, so you can stop forgetting how awesome you are. I don't mean like, so less about blasting it to the world, but more like so you can be aligned with your greatness so that you're not expecting someone in the relationship to make up that part of the worth so that you can really let the relationship blossom in the way it's meant to. Destiny? Yeah, I also, I feel like it's great to reach out when you have something to say. Yeah. So sometimes it's like, hey, I still exist, what's up? And I'm like, okay, that's, that's great. I'm glad you still exist. Um, you know, thrilled. <laughs> but it's great if you have something to say. Like, hey, you can watch me on this TV show this weekend. Or, hey, I saw this show that you worked on. Great work. Or... You know, because it's nice to get a compliment every once in a while. So, um, yeah, like something of value to say as well as, you know, but that's like how I like to be reached out to. Not just like, hey, I'm still here, still looking for work. Even though that might be what's behind what you're saying, what you actually say is like, hey, I just like booked this role on like Blue Bloods and you can see me this Friday. And I'll be like, oh, great. I might tune into Blue Bloods this Friday. Um, something simple straightforward but it has like value in it that's always really helpful to for expand me. on that i'll just tell you i'm in a long play with nintendo right now one of my dreams is to work for nintendo as a content creator so the vice president of sales and marketing just got promoted so like when i send emails like hey here's my stuff yeah his name is bowser too that's the best part his last name literally is bowser so bowser's taking over nintendo just newsflash Oh, it does. Yes, it's it's a whole thing. Any, yeah, it's a whole thing. So, I get more responses from him when I send things like, "Hey, congratulations on this," or "This Nintendo presentation was really cool," as opposed to, "Oh, hey, check out my new work," or something like that, because it's more catering to something that they accomplished, and I get, I feel that I get more responses from that. And indirectly, I'm now top of mind at least for a day. So, if there was something happens, if the timing worked out, great. If not, then at least I can do that every few months, for example. So, why don't we do this? Let's go through each stage of networking and then have a mini conversation about that before we get to questions. So, we're at we're somewhere out in person. We see people we want to talk to. We have not talked to them. We're working on our confidence. We have our lists, and now we want to approach somebody and and begin this networking exercise. Uh, Liz, let's start with you. Uh, give us some thoughts, some best practices, uh, and, and how we can approach these situations uh, while not feeling so nervous about it. Oh, yeah. Okay, so good. This is so fun. Okay, we're role playing. Okay, so um, the, the first thing is that you're nervous, you might be nervous. Like, by the way, that might not go away. So, like, breathe a little bit and remember that you're a human being with a body and that eye contact is really good and that you're just going to connect with another human being. I would absolutely begin this conversation with curiosity about the other person and connecting with them on a human level and like not go into kind of your bio or, or an ask right away. Um, but I just like the thing that has helped me as a shy introverted person is getting curious about other people's experience. People love to tell you about what's going on for them and that's where I would start. Yeah, I mean, I. I mean, coming from a not scientific perspective, I always compliment people if I'm scared to talk to them. So I say, like, I love your shoes. And then they say, Lots of good oh, shoes I in the front row, by the way. I Can I just say? Lots of funky shoes in the front store, row. I like it. Blah, 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 on the East wow. Village. Oh, I love the East Village. Blah, 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 you know, and you just kind of keep picking up from there. And then you start to go into other things, you know, because you've already created this, like, little, like, warmth between you. So yeah, I, I get really nervous talking to people too, but I always find it's nice. Cause you know, if it's someone you wanna talk to, you probably have something to compliment them on. So, you know, something like that, people always are like, oh great, somebody loves my shoes, awesome. <laughs> Book it. Um, I think, so I think I call, what's the half introvert, half extrovert thing? Am Ambivert, there you go, it's a one. new term. Um, so I think I'm that because I, I, uh, I go into, I mean, I try to go to networking events 
every month, like regularly, and I have certain. Where, where would you find them? Uh, so when I first moved to the city, I kind of just said yes to everything, um, and now I'm just on a bunch of. Oh, very Shonda lists. rhymes of you. I know. <laughs> I know that that was a great TED talk. Um, but I, I'm, uh, you know, there's, they're available. I mean, they're on Facebook. There's a lot of different networking events. There's different organizations that host networking events around the city constantly, uh, depending on the kind of groups you want to go into. Um, we can get to that a bit later, too. Um, and I can mention specific ones if that helps. Uh, but I think for me, you know, I, uh, as a partially introverted person, I have to sort of muster up my energy every time I go into s events like this. Um, and whether it's, uh, you know, me approaching people or people approaching me, um, sometimes it's just exhausting to constantly talk about what you do. Um, and this happens to me a lot, actually, when I go to film festivals. So I, I'll go to festivals sometimes just to network or just to meet people. Like, they have parties all the time. Um, and, you know, the first thing people want to ask you, are, you know, is like, so what film have you made or what do you do? What's your latest project? And it's kind of an exhausting way to start a conversation because you're already like, okay, one more time. <laughs> this is what I do. Um, so like Destiny said, like also just, you know, going into a conversation on a more personal level or on a more human level, um, whether it's complimenting them or whether it's talking about, you know, um, just anything in that environment that you're in or just anything that you might think maybe a common interest besides filmmaking or the creative stuff. Um, that'll, you know, people like to talk about themselves, um, but they also want to be seen as like wholesome human beings. Um, so if you, you know, come and talk to me about like, you know, what was the last great meal I had or what was, you know, where the last place, last place I traveled to because I love traveling and, you know, those are great ways to get me into that conversation. And then, yeah, sure, a few minutes in, let's talk about your projects and let's talk about what I'm doing. Um, so, yeah, it's, I think it's a bit of both. Having, having going ready with what you want to talk about your, uh, creatively, um, but also just remembering to being, you know, be a human being. Liz, what if the person who I've targeted I want to talk to all evening long is constantly in groups or talking in groups of two? How do I approach them? Oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> do a little dance if I don't have a lasso. So here's my thought on that, and I'd totally be open to what other people have to say. I, I feel like I hear a lot, um, so I, I'm really trying to push for this thing. Um, I, how do I get this thing out of this person? And to me, that question is like, I've come to the party to get that person. And that's sort of like back to that like target metaphor, which I think to me is, is just not my networking approach at all. So, cause my networking approach is to think about what it's like to be for that, for, for that person. So if that person is locked in conversation with people all night, it might not be the night for us to, to get to know each other. I might follow up that thing with a, like in something over email, um, but that's my approach. So I wouldn't, because uh, I, I would remember personally if it were me, I would remember somebody who rudely interrupted a conversation and that's that would be memorable in the wrong way. So I really like to feel out these things. I, I mean, I'm like, I believe that things are gonna unfold the way they're meant to in that situation. That's my, my take though. I'll, I've, I had two specific instances without naming names, obviously. Um, so one positive, one more negative. But um, I was at an event recently where someone sort of came up to me and just said, I mean, we started like, you know, just normal banter, like talking. And then he said, uh, what's one surprising thing about you? Or what's one interesting thing about you? Or one interesting fact about you? Which was non-creative. So then it was also kind of, for me, I felt like that was an interesting challenge because, again, like I said, people always ask me about my work all the time, and this was fun because I'm like, hey, let, let's think about what's you know what's one interesting fact about me that's not film related that someone might find um, cool, and then I kind of flipped the question on him too. So I answered it, and I flipped it on him. I was like, tell me something, what you know, and it was it was almost like I know it was a little bit a bit more confrontational, like challenging them to something, but it was it was that was I I, I understood that, that was the kind of personality he was. And that's what got us into a later a very engaging conversation. Because mm -hmm. um, it was challenging each other right up front and then we passed each other's test. It was like, okay, now let's talk about whatever we want. Um, so for me, that instance worked. I, I wouldn't say it works for everyone because some people kind of get um, defensive about that. But um, the other side of things is, you know, I had someone approach me uh, that just started an interrogation of like, 
What's the last film you made? You know, how much did it cost? What did you do with it? What are you doing next? When are you making it? Who are you casting? It was just I, like even before I had a chance to answer the questions, it was just like boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to slowly walk away from the situation because <laughs> I, I don't want to deal with this. Um, so, so that would be something you don't do, I guess. Yeah, I would say it's something not to do. And this is a story that happened to a director I was working with. A few years back, um, don't ambush someone at a urinal. Yes. <laughs> yes. As like as 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 a lady, that's not the experience that we have. But yes, I had a director, and he was like, "Yeah, I was in there, and this guy like at the urinal just started asking me all these questions about <laughs> about the projects I'm working on, and it was like really uncomfortable." Yeah. So. And then um, I hired him. <laughs> yeah. no, I'm just kidding. Imagine. <laughs> like don't d like give people, but in in, in the greater sense. Uh, you want to give people like some space, you know, kind of have a sense of like, hey, would I want somebody to come up and start asking me questions at this moment? Um, yeah. And sometimes if someone's been talking to people all night, maybe like they need like a little break. Right. So maybe they just need like a little space. So like the one second they're not talking to someone might not be like the moment you're like, this is my moment. Right. It might not be because literally they've been talking to people for hours. They might be a little exhausted, and then it's like, oh, another person comes, and you're like, oh, hey, yeah. Um, I always think if it's like the right environment and it feels like that, there's something you could do for somebody. You know, they've been standing there talking for a while. It's like, oh, can I grab you a water? Okay, you know, something like something very simple. It's like oh, I'm going to the bar. Does anybody, you know, to a group? I'm going to the bar. Does anyone let me? You know, does anybody need a drink? Whatever. You know, and then you bring back the drink and you're like, hey, you know, oh, I love Heineken, <laughs> whatever. Um, <laughs> but there there are different ways to like ingratiate yourself to a group of people, I think, as well. And also if you've just had a shared experience, you know, like let's say you just saw a film or you just saw a play or you were just in the same event of some sort, you can always start by saying something about that event that you all just shared. And then that opens you up to a group conversation if someone's surrounded by a group that can then lead to, you know, they say something that's like, oh, I thought the same thing, or oh, I thought the exact opposite thing. How fascinating, we saw this so differently. Um, yeah, so there are all sorts of ways to, I mean, in some ways, um, I always feel like networking tips often sound kind of like dating tips. Like there's not that much difference between the two, but. Um, I think it's just it's just an attempt to get to know people and to engage with people on a human level, which is the same whether it's a professional or personal context. Study body language for sure. Um, I, you know, even if it's a group setting or someone's kind of standing by themselves at the bar, I mean, people express themselves through body language all the time. Mm. Um, and so, if again, if like Destiny said, if someone's been talking constantly and just need like a minute to breathe. I mean, I, when I'm in that situation, I'll just sort of like turn away from everyone, like go in a corner, literally, when I don't want to talk to people, and then come back when I'm ready. Um, so if I'm in a corner, don't come and like chase me in the corner. Um, or you know, the pho like phones are our easiest sort of escape, right? So if someone pulls out their phone and they're just taking a minute to check their messages, let them do that. And sometimes it's intentional. Sometimes they're staring at their phone on purpose because they don't want to talk to someone. <laughs> Um, so it's a lot of, I mean, you know, actors are, are great at sort of observing other people's behaviors and body language. That's kind of how you study and how you, you know, embody characters. So, d you know, use that skill in a professional setting. And same with filmmaking, filmmakers, like I'm constantly studying people's body language to know when they're open to conversing and when they're not. I think this is fascinating. I mean, I'm sure that this room in relation to the rest of the city probably has a heightened sense of body language and awareness, right? So what are some things that we could be keeping in mind, body language wise, maybe social cues or signs, uh, whether somebody is interested in the conversation or just wants to get out of the conversation? One of them that I, I, I've noticed is the feet, the direction of the feet. So if they're pointing towards the door and you're talking to them and they're not pointing towards you, that's a big one. No, seriously, it's a big one. T take a look. Next time you talk to somebody new, if they're, they're facing this way and their body language is sort of angled in a different direction, they don't want to talk to you. Yeah, or if they're looking towards the door. Or if they're walking towards the door, they don't want to talk to you either. <laughs> but seriously, what, what are some other social cues we can uh, keep in mind? Eye contact, for sure. Um, if you, you're trying to talk to someone and they're just not return I mean you should obviously be making eye contact but if they're not returning that eye contact regularly 
or looking away at other things, it's it's losing interest. It's obviously losing interest. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, something, I mean, this is me personally, but I've experienced this on the other side. Like, if the other person is only giving you, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, uh, cool, like, then they're not like really listening or engaging with what you're saying so it might be time to start to wrap it up because you're not get you're not getting any further than you've already got when you're like great <laughs> you know <laughs> they're just like yeah because sometimes you could just be exhausted like sometimes if you've been talking to people for hours and hours and you just like can't really give more insightful you know like feedback or you just can't really like you know it's like oh can you tell me about this i'm like it was it was really cool, you know. Like if they're not giving anything that really has more to it, I think it could be good to be like, "Oh, it was so nice meeting you." You know, I'd love to see you again, and then just like move on. It's like when someone responds with one word text messages, like, "Okay, <laughs> thanks, cool," and that in person would be, you know, them not being. Liz, any thoughts? I was just going to say in response to Destiny's, I just think that's a great chance to water the plant of your relationship when you notice that person is tired and like maybe doesn't want to talk, to say thanks, have a good night and not engage. That could be just as valuable for your relationship as you going up and like asking for, in fact, more valuable than you going up and asking for a bunch of things. So if we're playing the long game, as you're saying, we're building the plant for a long time. Um, it's also just getting out of the scarcity mindset that this is the last time I could talk to this person. Like, mm -hmm. let's just imagine a world where we're gonna get in the same space again. So this is not my only chance. I, I'm, you know, we could hang out again. One more question before we get to your questions. Okay, so you have the contact information. Now you're making correspondence. Now you're keeping in touch, watering the plant. Uh, give us some best practices there in terms of, uh, one big thing is that let's go to coffee or let's get a bite, or something like that, right? Uh, let's talk frequency, let's talk meeting in person versus keeping in touch digitally. Uh, how should we navigate those waters? Uh, well, one thing I'll say on the meeting in person and digitally, I think meeting in person is amazing. I think stuff happens and it's awesome, and I also love to give people the opportunity to respond to you without meeting in person. So that's when I really love to say, I'd love to take you out to a quick coffee, or uh, if I know your schedule's super busy, would you be willing to jump on Skype with me for 20 minutes and chat about X, Y, and Z? I, not Skype, sorry, what am I, it's like 1990. Um, on, you know, on Zoom or FaceTime. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think that in person is awesome, but feel it out, and I think people really like the opportunity. We're, we're really busy people, so I like to give them as many opportunities to stay in contact as possible. Yeah, uh, for me personally, um, I'm really busy during the day. I barely get a lunch break, so it's really unlikely I'm going to go to lunch or grab a coffee with anyone that I don't already know. Um, and that's uh, I would say that's common to a lot of casting directors. We just have a lot going on during the day. Um, I am more likely to uh, attend a show or a film or something like that. So it's like, Oh, like if you have if you're in a show and you're like, oh, I'm in the show. I'd love for you to come and we could chat after for like 10 minutes and great because then I'm like I go to shows like at least four times a week anyway. So that's something that's kind of more built into the structure of the way that my day works. I'm also more likely to respond if somebody's like, hey, can we hop on the phone for like five to 10 minutes, you know, like after lunch or something. Uh, because it's just really hard for me to schedule any kind of, you know, especially during the day, any kind of, you know, personal, like, face-to-face -face interaction. But those things are more, are, are, are better, just as far as I'm concerned. As Melissa, if, if, by the way, if you have a question, please give it to Melissa, and she's going to give us those cards momentarily. But here's a question, too. Uh, just the thought of mentors. Uh, I know that a lot of us in this room are going along in their careers. Maybe we haven't reached the top of the mountain just yet, and we would love the advice of people who are there or people who could certainly not just find us jobs but help us with advice to navigate those waters to get jobs. So how do I find a mentor? How do I know a mentor is right for me? How do I keep in touch with a mentor? Uh, what should I expect from a mentor and what can I give to a mentor in return? I think I've struggled with that is, is, more, is more the thought of, well, I'm asking, 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 asking of a mentor. What exactly am I giving to this person? Um, 
I believe, I just really believe that as when we're making direct asks, so if you get to the point where you're gonna make a direct ask to a mentor, if someone, and I think that's a really sacred relationship, would you be my mentor, that once we ask somebody a direct question, it's their responsibility to say yes or no, and then we let it be in their hands whether or not how it's going for them. And I'll just assume that if someone says yes, I'll be your mentor, they already know that they're gonna get back the experience of giving back for me. So I just trust, I trust people at their word, and um, I believe that you'll, they'll get back a lot from that relationship. Um, the thing I'll say about mentorship is that it's, to me, it's really not casual. So I, I have a lot of people like, I just need to get a mentor. Um, but I think like, first of all, you can get mentors. I have a lot of mentors who don't know that they're my mentor. <laughs> um, but I have a little, <laughs> And I can't wait to meet them in person. Surprise. Surprise. Let's no, name them right now. No, I really will. I'm going to show up and be like, Brene Brown, like, I'm your mentee, like, this whole time. Um, and so I, I really, like, I have a little spiritual board of directors, and Michelle Obama's on there, and, like, Susan B. Anthony, and they guide me, too, so that I'm not taking everything from the mentor because the few mentors that I have are really busy. So we have like a conversation every couple of months and I like track questions and I ca track really high level questions to be able to ask them. Um, yeah, I mean, that that's a great thing. I was going to say that, too. I think the for me, a lot of the mentor relationships are very casual and, and I I've never gone to someone and just said, like, you will be my mentor now. Um, yeah, exactly. And I, and I think it, it's, been, uh, it's been a very gradual build-up process as you build a relationship with someone. And I have several of those sort of mentor-type people in my life as well um, for different purposes, too. So, you know, for example, if, um, you know, I also write. So, if you know, I know a couple of really, really good writers that I really respect that I will, you know, I'll happily read their stuff if they want feedback. I'll offer that to them, and then when I have scripts, I'd love feedback on. I'll like, ask them if they want to read it. Um, similarly, on the producing or directing side, um, and also the other thing I, I really like to do is I'm very aware of what other people are also working on, uh, and I almost um, I mean I, I read a lot. I kind of keep up with the world and the news a lot. So if someone else has told me, someone who's more experienced than me, that they're working on, say, a project about some specific you know current affairs issue. Um, and if I come across something in the news or something in the media that is related to their their project, I will send it to them. I was like, hey, like I came across this. This might be relevant for what you're doing. Hope it helps. You know, hope you're doing well. Um, and and I think that and then they really appreciate that. And people have done that to me, and that really means a lot. Cause I'm like, look, I'm not the only one who cares about my project. There's other people who genuinely care. Yeah, and when I, I when I started when I realized I wanted to like work in casting and I'd also worked in theater before that, I was looking for a mentor and didn't find a lot of options mainly because I was hoping to find a black woman to be my mentor and the industry especially at that time there weren't a lot and the ones that there were were like very busy or in Los Angeles and so, you know, I ended up you know, just like studying a lot and doing like email correspondence with a few people who were very busy and still gave me their time. And now in my career now, it's really important to me to mentor other people. So I have like seven mentees who, who I work with. And possibly more after tonight. Um, <laughs> one quick thing I would say is when somebody says to you, hey, let me know what I can do for you, just take them at their word. Uh, I see a lot of people not actually following up on that. I say that to people and I'm like, I don't say that to everybody. I mean that. I'm assuming you're gonna email me in a couple months and request my help from you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so we got a lot of questions. The first thing I wanna say is you all have awful handwriting. <laughs> So I'm gonna do my best here, okay? Uh, but I will also mention, <laughs> I will also mention that we're gonna be sticking around afterwards. If you guys have specific questions for people uh, in specific fields, feel free to pass that along. If I don't get to all the questions, it's just because we ran out of time with the formal portion. But we do have um, a. Uh, you will be leading Liz uh, a more interactive portion after this, and we will all be here, so you can feel free to ask us any questions you might have. Uh, this is a good one for you, Destiny. Um, if a casting director is bringing you in to an audition for the first time, is it okay to thank them on social media, Twitter, et cetera? Is it okay to at them, i.e. thank them publicly after the audition? I'm gonna go with no. <laughs> I mean, I can't speak for everybody, but there's something about that that feels very kind of self-serving to me. 
It feels very like, look at me, I got an audition, suckers. <laughs> so um, uh, I personally would not be comfortable with that. So, yeah. Uh, this one says, good evening. I would like to ask how I can balance both an acting and a political career on social media. Just more generally, just the idea of talking politics on social media. This is a big topic. I know it's not necessarily networking related, but it could be if somebody you're networking with sees your social media. So how do we navigate that? Oh, I mean, I've gotten a lot of hate comments and um, I've gotten hate mail, so I'm happy to speak on this um, because I decided to make my platform political. Um, and I just decided that I really believe when you have multiple identities, I work with multi-hyphenates, that you, it's not your job to hide them from the world. At certain times, it's your job to shape the narrative for people. Like if you're going into casting, you're not gonna like bring your postcards for your dog walking business. <laughs> but um, you, but I don't on social media, I, d I don't believe you need to hide parts of yourself if that makes you feel like less of a human being. Like that's not gonna lead to a fulfilled life. So if it's important to you to take political views, I would just step into the belief that that will then attract coll creative collaborators who align with those views. And that will just bring more of the right people into your world. I will say I ended up, I have, um, not used, but I have aligned with people on political issues and then we've collaborated in other ways. I, I would just say not being, I mean, it's totally fine being political on social media, just don't be sort of aggressive or like, you know, attacking other people. I think that really puts me off. I, you know, you don't have to have the same political beliefs as I do, that's perfectly fine. We can disagree on that. But, you know, when I see someone attacking someone else on Twitter, and, and Twitter especially can get, a, it can be a very vicious place uh, sometimes. So I, when I see that, when I see other creative people doing that, that just completely puts me off. I'm like, I don't, as a person, if that's someone that is okay with attacking others, like, I don't want to be associated with them. But if they, if, you know, if I disagree with them politically and they're very nice about it and very um, fair about it, that's perfectly fine. That, that, you know, that should I use the law of physics on this one. Every action is an equal and opposite reaction. So the level of uh, opinion and the level of sort of strength that you put out there, particularly on Twitter, you can expect to come back at you. So just be ready for that. If you choose that path, we're not saying do or don't. We're just saying be cognizant of the fact that whatever you put out there will come back because that's just the way that Twitter is because there's no real filter, right? People can say what they want. They can hide behind fake accounts. That's just the way that Twitter is. So just be mindful of that as you're putting stuff out there. I think that's fair. Uh, do you recommend hiring a publicist in order to come to the attention of casting directors or other people of influence? Well, you guys answer that question. All right, there you go. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know if as an actor, if you feel like you are not getting work, a publicist is going to help you get work necessarily. I mean, but I mean, it really depends, though. If you if you're more of like a personality, then a public a publicist can help you get more coverage, which can lead to acting jobs. You know, there like as you guys know, there are people who are not necessarily trained as professional actors who do get acting jobs because they've developed a following as a personality. So, I mean, I don't think it's like a hundred percent something that I wouldn't recommend for someone who's more of like a personality and that's how they're going to kind of move into doing more acting or more appearances on television. But for just like an actor that wants to get acting jobs, uh, I, I, I don't think that's a, a good early step. I would use those networking skills that you learned here to find the people that book those segments if you were looking for something like that as opposed to paying thousands of dollars to a publicist who might land you one segment on local news. That's just me. Right. Maybe I've had a bad experience or two, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, this is for everyone. How is the best way to be easily found? Taken into account that too much information may be unwise, social media can be dangerous. So is there a risk of oversharing uh, and, and being found the wrong way as opposed to the right way? Yes. <laughs> um, I really value websites, like personal websites or your professional website. I, you know, there, there's a whole technical SEO metrics thing, which I don't fully understand and won't get into, but of, of what comes up first when, when you Google your name. Um, but often for people, it's their social media accounts that pop up first. 
Um, and I think uh, whoever has tech and, you know, knowledge here can correct me, but I think when you have a personal website that's being constantly updated, that generally gets bumped up to the top, and there's a lot of these keywords and taglines and things, but um, I value that a lot when someone contacts me or when I meet someone somewhere, um, especially if they're actors or other creative collaborators. Like, I, I just want to see all your stuff in one place um, and keep that updated and keep it, you know, um, the other thing I would recommend is don't make your websites like too crowded and loud or you know there, there's sort of a bit of an aesthetic thing to it as well where if I, I shouldn't go into your home page and just be like scared away from it because there's like all these words and pictures um, kind of lead me through your journey on your website and who you are and your story because um, I think we're all storytellers in different ways we're all we all know how to tell stories um, so tell me your story through your website uh, and that matters a lot to me when I'm meeting people yeah and you can do your best to construct your own narrative so when you have your own website, when you really tailor your social media pages, thinking about the fact that people who might eventually employ you or people that you might eventually work with might be looking at them, you can tailor your sites to to attract that, you know, so it has the information that you want them to see and doesn't include things that you don't. So, you know, if those are the first things that come up, most people aren't going to go like 10 things down. They're going to look at the first two or three. So I think that's really important. So you can be like, look, I am a professional person who has this information constructed in a professional way. And that's the first thing, the first impression we're going to get when we Google you. Yeah, I just think it, I, I want to know on going on social media that you are what you do. It's the same thing in a conversation. Sometimes when you shy away from saying, like, I'm an actor, period. Awesome. <laughs> Instead of, like, the apology afterward. Like, I would want to see on social media some remnants of this is what you're doing. And I can usually tell with a client if they're hiding a bit from some of their identities and not sharing it professionally on the social media. Yeah, and just like a teeny thing on that, because I remember one of my mentees, um, I said to him, I was like, hey, I think you need to post more on social media about the acting you're doing, because I know that you're working all the time. But like, just putting that in the world. And he's like, oh, I feel like I'm bragging or whatever. I'm like, no, just be like, so excited to do this reading of this new like script or so thrilled to work with these great people or to come back to this theater or back to this, you know? And so it doesn't come off as like he's bragging. It just is like, oh, he's excited about these things because he literally like two weeks before that had had a friend who he'd known since school who was like, oh man, are you still acting? And it's like, yeah, he was working all the time. So now he's like, yeah, you were right. Cause it's been like two years. Um, <laughs> and it's like, yeah, like it's important to just like put those things out there because it's like, um, again, it's like one of those dating things. It's like, it's your, like the attra you're attracted to the attractive person, the person who's working all the time and is busy and has like all the stuff going on seems more attractive to anyone than the person who's like, oh, I got nothing, you know? So yeah, it's, it's not bragging. You just like phrase it in a way that feels like this is just what I'm up to, just like you would share what you had for breakfast. Especially um, if you want them to know that and you want them to know that before like going into it, you have to put it out there because your biggest champion is always going to be yourself, right? We all know that. Oh, a mentor of mine says, it ain't bragging if you've done it. Uh, here's a very good question, actually. How likely will you check links for YouTube reels and videos that are sent to you by someone you don't know? So I do this all the time. I send my reel to a lot of people, and I use the law of sales. Out of 100 emails, I might get five responses, and maybe one person or two people might actually take the time to, to look at it. I use the, you know, the $1.99 rule, so I make... I have one reel that is specifically exactly 59 seconds, not one minute, 59 seconds, because I know that people have short attention spans, and when they click, you can feel free to use this, okay? Just credit me when you guys win your Oscars. <laughs> so they see 59 seconds, and they're much more likely to watch the whole thing because it's less than a minute. Then if I send them something that's four and a half minutes, the first thought they're gonna have is this is too much. Like I don't even watch four and a half minute entertainment, entertaining videos. My attention span is gonna move around somewhere else, right? So that's, I say, if you have only a minute, watch this one, and then I have the other ones there just in case. But chances are they're gonna watch that one and, and formulate an opinion in the first seven seconds. Yeah, I mean, I try to keep my work email pretty uh, work-related. 
Uh, so I usually share it with people that I work with, even though I'm sure anyone can email me. Um, but I would say it depends on whether it's helpful. Like if it's like, here's my reel, then probably not because that's just like, okay, there's a reel, great. Like if it's like, hey, I heard you're casting this and I think I would be great for this role, I've included my reel that has this relevant scene in it, then maybe. I'm not saying yes, but maybe. Going back um, to the specificity yeah. that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that? Um, I think it's uh, where, I guess it's the timing of it too. Um, if I meet someone in at an event, uh, I get your card or something, and I think that some, that person might be really interesting for a project that I have right now, then definitely I'll go and look you up and again, have your reel on your website. Um, if it's private, then you know, tell me that, that it, there's a password or whatever. Um, but put it on your website so I can find it easily. But if you're emailing someone, yeah, I mean, I, I generally, when I'm in project mode, I'll watch certain things because I'm curious about what's coming through. Um, but again, if I don't have time, I'm just gonna like either bookmark it for later or not, you know, um, not watch it. Yeah, and to come on the back of that, um, being recommended, especially if you're like, oh, I don't know this person, I'm sending them an email blindly, like, Hopefully, uh, you have an agent or manager who can help push you for things because that is a big part of what we do is that we rely on agents and managers to kind of cut through some of the noise to find the people who are most right. Or you know someone who knows me or you know someone who knows one of my colleagues and it'd be like that person like giving you that push to be like, hey, this person is really right for this thing. It goes a long way having that like other person pushing for you as well. So like you might send me your reel and then, you know, someone else that I've worked with before, so they might follow up and be like, hey, I just wanted to draw your attention to the reel that this actor sent you. You know, I've worked with her before and she's very professional and I think she's someone you should get to know. Uh, this is the last card we'll read, but again, we're gonna be here, so feel free to ask us questions. Uh, you've nailed it, Josh. This is my favorite card and I wanna read you his two questions here. <laughs> So, uh, panel, how would you analyze the last chapter of Catcher in the Rye, specifically for a ninth grade essay asking for a friend? <laughs> Anyone? Any, any thoughts on Catcher in the Rye? <laughs> nice try, well, though. Nice try, kid. I, nice I was try. just going to say that, like, yeah, take, take leadership over your own high school career. <laughs> uh, his other question here is a cute one, and, uh, and we love fun questions. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? Let's end on that. The most important question we're going to get. Green tea. Really? Yeah. Green tea. I love green tea ice cream. I have never tried green. Really? You should. Wow. I will like go out of the way wow. to get green tea ice cream. Okay. Yeah, it's delicious. Wow. Cookies and cream. Yes. Cookies and cream staple. Pistachio. Excellent. Choice. Wow. We are an eclectic bunch. <laughs> Incredible. I was going to say salted caramel, but now I feel basic also. saying that. But it's kind of cool, right? So now, like, all over the room, there's, like, little connections that just happen. Yes. So thank you for that question, because now, like, somewhat we're going to find each other based on these flavors. Mm -hmm. Right. So the green tea folks can, <laughs> can come meet Destiny. All right, a round of applause for our panelists. Uh, fantastic information here. This was a lot of fun.